Walker is in some good company. Fourth defensive end to go first overall since 2001. Joining Mario Williams, Shadevian Clowney, and Miles Garrett. Unlike those other three, Walker never made all-conference or all-American in college. And we welcome in Mel Kuyper Jr. to the program. And Mel, it's interesting, right off the bat, we, we, we had some question about you go Hutchinson out of Michigan, you go Walker, and Jacksonville went Walker, and, and you made no bones about it. That was not a pick that you loved. For the folks that weren't watching the draft earlier, explain why. Yeah, lack of production, Scotty. I think your number one pick overall, 16, 15, even 14, I'd have been fine with the risk-reward, okay? As Lewis Riddick always says, mitigate risk. But when you're not productive in college in terms of finishing, I'm talking about nine and a half career sacks, 13 career tackles for loss, one career force fumble. I get the talent. I see the versatility. And I see the quickness inside. I don't see the quickness outside. I don't see the hand usage. I don't see that. So I don't see one-on-one -on -one domination to be the number one pick overall. And I went back to the history books. And I looked at the guys that went high. They, they triple, quadruple the numbers, Scott, in terms of those finishing numbers. So this is historically low. The talent is historically high. So what you hope to do is Brentson Buckner, the D-line coach, has to take the talented kid like Trayvon Walker and try to make him a productive finisher in the NFL. That'll be interesting to see how that plays out. It's dangerous, Mel, for me to ask you what someone else thought because it's not your job to know what Jacksonville thought. But if you put yourself in that room and say why with other talent at that position yeah. available would they have gone that route, what, what would you guess is, is what the thought process was? 6'5", 272, ran 4'5", vertical 35 and a half, has incredibly long arms, and he did have his moments, Scott. They moved him around. I, I said the booger, I, I was kiddingly saying, you're, you're excuse man McFarland because you're making excuses <laughs> for why he didn't perform up uh -huh. to the level necessary. But you know, booger saying, I can see reasons. Let's not call them excuses. Booger wanted to say they're reasons, Scott. They're not okay. excuses. So reasons have to be translated into coaching, changing that, and making him a guy in one-on-one -on -one situations can beat that best player in the world as opposed to I call them AOG Scott another occupation guys okay so if you didn't do it against the AOGs are you going to do it in the NFL against the best in the world that's my question right. I want to see it play out you know uh, no that's not unreasonable and and that's a great answer to to what you think they might be thinking thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content subscribe to ESPN plus